as you could see in my last video, I started working with some fixed drain clamps and soft jaws. And until now I've been mostly using off-the-shelf components. I do however see the benefit in trying a DIY approach, so in this video I'll be going through the process to machine my own eccentric screw clamps and while that optimize them to better fit my needs. There are a couple of reasons I see making my own clamps can be beneficial. And first and foremost is customization, meaning that I can customize the clamps to my needs and the parts that I want to hold on to. Second is cost saving. I do believe that I can save some money when machining my own. This is more for the screw part than for the brass clamp, as the suppliers where I can get them from the eccentric screws are around three to four euros a piece. And this is quite a lot when you compare them to just off-the-shelf normal screws. And lastly, as I design then the clamps and the hold down myself, I can achieve better compatibility with the task at hand. So these style of clamps consist of a clamping body and the screw that tightens the clamping body against the workpiece. And the head of the screw is off-center from the third part allowing our clamping movement when tightening or loosening the bolt. When starting this project I was curious why brass oftentimes is used and it really does make sense, especially when holding onto aluminum parts. This is for example because brass is softer than steel but harder than aluminum. So uh, the brass clamps have less chance of damaging the part than, for example, a steel clamp. Also, the combination of brass and aluminum provide a good static friction and with this uh, solid grip. And the brass doesn't easily deform or gall when holding onto aluminum parts, so they should last quite a long time. And thus, the material is machinable without too much headache. In the beginning I thought that for these screws I will need to purchase specific ones, so ones where the hex drive and the head is manufactured off-center to the thread part of the screw. But it turns out they are quite difficult to obtain, so I will try my hands on just using regular bolts and then machine the head in such a way that the head and the thread are no longer on the same plane. So this is the fixture that I decided on to machine the bolt heads. It's a backplate in which I can screw four bolts at a time and I also countered the bolts um, because the way the tool will cut, um, the force of the tool could potentially unscrew the bolts. That will mean probably a broken tool uh, and also maybe a broken fixed string. I got sort of lucky with some of these screws. I ordered two packs, one 4x10 and one 4x8. Those are the ones with a small head, so and that means also that X driver is also quite a bit smaller. So this is a 2.5 mil um, hex key and the bolt head is 7 mil, so I have uh, quite a bit of material that I can machine away without really compromising the, um, the grip of the, of the tool. One of those, these ones, um, they have a really good, uh, I think I got lucky and the hex driver fits really well. 
um, without a lot of play. Um, with the other ones, I think that maybe it's just more worn out. It's the same manufacturer, so I hope they would both be fine, but yeah, these are a bit looser than the other ones. With this fixturing, I can also touch off at the corner of the fixture itself, and this is a bit easier than trying to touch off um, from a round surface, at least with the tools that I have. The plan is to machine most of the material with an 8mm end mill to get the off-center screw action and then use a chamfer tool to clean up the, the sharp edge. I was a bit too cautious, I believe, but these are the sort of first parts that I'm building in steel. So I'm a bit over cautious when it comes to tool engagement. Uh, you can see the adaptive part doesn't really round the corners, uh, but I think for the first trial that will be fine. Um, here I have now placed one sort of off the shelf screw and one that I machined myself. You can see that the purchased one has a larger tool, I think it's a 3mm or even 35 and my bolts are using a 2.5mm hex drive. You can also see that in the purchased ones the hex drive is still in the center, even though the head itself is off-center from the um, threaded part, but these screws are also way more expensive, so mine have now an off-center. Um, hex surface, but in theory both should just work fine. What I've kept the same or almost the same is the size of the bolt head. Um, here I stayed sort of true to the original dimensions and also the amount of um, clamping travel sort of of centerness if you could say so. I think it's 0.8 mil so 0.8 mil of difference between um, like flat or small side and larger side. I think this is optimized so that you have the most amount of travel while also reducing the chance of the screw unwinding in a high vibration environment because the sort of pitch is larger and with that an unscre like unscrewing would be easier. The setup to be able to machine the press clamps took quite a bit of thinking and as a first trial I want to machine ones that have different lengths along the outside surface. The parts that I purchased are 4mm either side um, or 8mm from one edge to the other edge and this all the way around. But as for example with the aluminum extrusion brackets I'm using parts directly of the bandsaw and this means that the travel of the screw is uh, not enough. Therefore I want to machine parts that have different lengths and I can sort of clock the brass clamp uh, to account for the error in my saw cut. The plan for machining the clamps is that I will use this soft jaw and uh, this then can hold the hex stock material um, in the vise with the soft jaw against the fixed jaw of the vise and the moving jaw of the vise will then clamp against the hex stock. For now I have prepared two planks with which I will try it out. For now I'm not fully convinced of this stack of parallels and sim stock to hold up the soft jaw just to the right height um, where I won't run into the vise itself um, but I will try it out before I make any changes. Also I have to sort of keep it off center to, to be able to reference this corner.
it looks like it worked, but I think there was literally no space left between the part and the moving jaw of the vise. Um, I believe it's less than 20th of a millimeter, if even. That was really, really close. When flipping the parts, you could see that the soft jaw moves. This means that the X and Y alignment won't be correct anymore. I sort of anticipated that and therefore the second operation is only the planing operation, just to get it to the right thickness. And this means that the X and Y uh, offset is not that critical, only the height and the height with the same stack up should be more or less the same. For this thing I'm using the aluminum extrusion bracket fixture plate from my last video as this was one of the reasons I decided to build my own clamps. I did modify the original design in that my DIY clamps are a bit taller. This is so the screw sits lower than the clamp body itself. To accompany that I relieved some of the spots where the hold downs are placed in the fixture plate. And during this testing I noticed that I really like my DIY approach. Uh, as now the screws clearly show if they are in the open or in the closed position and in which direction to turn. As in the commercial ones, the hex drive is itself off-center with the head. This is not possible with them. However, while running a couple of parts, I noticed a flaw in my design. This is as I just ripped the clamp right off the screw. The clamps are being held to the screw by this little lip and uh, it seems like in my design this was not beefy enough. Also, I don't think it helps to increase the height of the clamp itself as this can cause a higher moment arm and with that a lot more force on this little piece of material that holds it to the screw itself. So I did a bit of a redesign and run a second batch now with a slightly beefier lip uh, in the hopes that this improves the stability. Overall, I really think that this project was a success. I do see some improvements in the future, but for now I have the tooling, some experience and the materials always at hand to make custom fixture clamps in the future. See you in the next one.